If you've ever tried to learn about neural networks on YouTube, you've probably seen diagrams like this with lots of circles and arrows, and maybe it's been introduced in the context of something like image recognition, where it is trying to identify or predict the percentage probability that a picture contains a dog. And you might have seen lots of terms thrown around like weight or bias or activation function, and this can all get kind of confusing when you see it for the first time. So that is not what we are going to do in this video. Instead, we're going to look at an example of a simple network that only contains a single neuron with a handful of inputs. This forms the basic building block of the more complex network that you saw on the previous slide. This example will have a single binary output, meaning it can be either one or zero. This type of simple network with a single binary output is called a perceptron. Let's forget about this diagram for now and back up a bit and start with a simple word problem for our example. Say you want to make a decision like, should I go to the playground today? You might consider various things or inputs when you make that decision. For example, you might ask, is it sunny out? Are my friends going? And am I done with my homework? And all of these inputs could have a yes or no answer. Depending on the answers or states of these inputs, you would then decide on the output, yes or no, whether or not you should go to the playground. And you could represent this decision-making process with an algorithm without needing to use a neural network. For example, you could write a simple algorithm that says, if two or more of the inputs are yes, I will go to the playground. Now let's switch back to the diagram we were using to represent a neural network and see how we could use it to represent this algorithm. So our algorithm is represented by this circle here where we are checking if two or more of our inputs are yes. And we have these three inputs, each of which can be yes or no. Is it sunny out? Are my friends going? And am I done with my homework? Our algorithm then has a single output for whether or not to go to the playground which is yes if two or more of the inputs are yes, and no if less than two inputs are yes. If we wanted a computer to do this for us, we could switch to using ones and zeros instead of yeses and nos, because computers use ones and zeros. So for example, we could represent yes with a one and no with a zero. Now, instead of yes or no, we would check if each of our inputs is one or zero. For example, if it's sunny out, this input would be a one. If it's not sunny, this input would be a zero. We would then add up the inputs and compare to the number two. If the sum is greater than or equal to two, then our output would be one. For yes, we should go to the playground. And if the sum is less than two, then our output would be zero, for we should not go to the playground. This approach works if all of the inputs are equally important to you. But for example, say that you really want to see your friends and you don't care that much if it's sunny because you can just put on a jacket if it's chilly out. And to account for that, we can give each input a multiplier or a weight. So this is where we're going to start getting into some of the terminology you might have heard if you've looked at neural networks before. So rather than just counting each input as one or zero, we're going to multiply each input by a weight, and that weight can be different for each input. We are then going to add up all of those values and compare to some threshold value to decide our output. The output will be one if the sum is greater than or equal to the threshold, and will be zero if the sum is less than the threshold. Now, don't worry if that sounds a little abstract. Next, we're going to walk through a concrete example. For our example, let's say that it is sunny out, so that input is one. Your friends are going, so that input is one, but you are not done with your homework, so that input is zero. We are then going to start with three randomly chosen weights, and we'll talk a little bit more about the weights later, but for now, don't worry about where these numbers came from. We'll say we have a weight of three for whether it's sunny, a weight of five for your friends, and a weight of one for your homework. We are going to multiply each input by its weight, add up those values and compare to a threshold, which is also randomly chosen to begin with. We've chosen a threshold of six and use that to determine the output. We can do the math to calculate that sum. So first we have a one for it is sunny out times a three for that weight, plus a one for your friends are going times a five for that weight, 
plus zero for not done with your homework, times one, that adds up to eight, which we can then compare to our threshold of six. And in this case, we see that eight is greater than or equal to six, so the output will be one, we should go to the playground. We can change our inputs to see how the output would change. For example, let's say that it is no longer sunny out, so this input is now a zero. If we redo the math, we will see that the new sum is now five, which is less than six, so the output would be zero, we should not go to the playground. But you might look at this and say, wait a minute, I really wanna see my friends and I don't care if it's not sunny out, so that is not right. I need to change this somehow so it would output the correct answer for this set of inputs, which would be one, I should still go to the playground. And you could look at this and maybe notice that there are two different ways you could do that. One would be to lower the threshold, so your output of five would be greater than or equal to the threshold, or you could increase the weight for your friends. In other words, you make seeing your friends more important so in this case, you would increase the sum, which would then be greater than or equal to the fixed threshold if you left that at six. To keep our example simple, we are not going to change two things at once. We are going to leave the threshold at six, but increase the weight for our friends to seven. We then see that when we redo the math, the new sum of our inputs times their weights is seven. So if we compare that to our threshold, seven is greater than or equal to six, so the output is one, we should go to the playground. What we have just done, maybe without realizing it, is a model of how machine learning works with a neural network. We provided a set of inputs to the network, and then we looked at the output and checked whether or not the output was correct based on how a human would answer the question. We then adjusted the parameters of the model, in this case, one of the weights, to change the output and check again to see if the output improved. We could continue to go through other possible combinations of these inputs, look at the output, see if the output of the model is correct, and then continue to adjust these weights until the output was correct more or most of the time. The difference between our very simple example here and a neural network that would be used for something like image recognition is that this network could have hundreds or thousands of neurons and multiple layers of neurons that are connected to each other, each with their own weights and thresholds. So there are way too many parameters in this model for a human to go in and tweak them all one at a time and change them to try and improve the output. Instead, that process is done automatically, but the human still provides the training data. So we can provide a neural network with lots and lots of pictures of dogs and things that aren't dogs, and then look at the output to see whether it is accurately identifying the pictures of the dogs. But the process to then update the weights and the thresholds within the network is done automatically using more advanced math that we're not going to cover in this video. But as the network goes through that process of training or learning, it can improve its output to more accurately identify the pictures of dogs. Even though this video is not a complete explanation of how a neural network learns, because again, that is a more advanced topic, hopefully you now have an understanding of how these basic building blocks or individual neurons work. If you would like to try this yourself by coming up with your own decision sets of inputs and then adjusting the weights to tune the model, check out the link in the video description to see how you could use this for a science project. For more projects on artificial intelligence and other cutting edge areas of science and engineering, visit our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.